I'm too tall, I'm too tall. I gotta scoot down so y'all can see me. <laughs> oh yeah, I gotta adjust it. Oh, this is one of them days, everybody. I started a project. I gotta fix this lighting really fast. And believe it or not, I make big mistakes sometimes. Oh yeah. Oh, this was a doozy. Pardon me. Excuse me. Yes, this is live. This is impromptu. And this is uncoordinated. <laughs> oh. I have this little... Oh, goodness. Let me turn this light out. It's a little bit too bright. Uh, it's a little bit better, hopefully. Anyway, I'll, I'll hold it close. Um... Yeah, I've been going up and down the stairs. Sorry, I'm a little, 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 um, I okay, can't fix it. It's done. Um, going up and down the stairs and rearranging some park space. And in the midst of all that, I'm trying to finish some drapes for by Thanksgiving. <laughs> Nothing like the last minute, right? We all do that. Well, I thought I had the right amount of fabric. I really did. I measured, I don't like 84 inch long uh, drapes or curtains. So I'm making them 80, 82. I don't like them dragging on the floor. You know, they pick up the dirt and stuff and then you got to wash them more often. But so I measured these things at least two or three times. What I didn't anticipate and count on was this crinkle drape material. It's very flowy. It looks great hanging up. Have a little bit of texture. You know, it has the little crinkles in it. Makes it wonderful. Well, it's stretchy too. That's what those crinkles are in there for. That's to stretch it. So when you go to cut this stuff, at least for me, it doesn't like a straight line. It doesn't matter how many times I laid this material down and had it nice and smooth and flat, and I go cut it even using a, uh, a guide, and, you know, an acrylic uh, ruler that I use all the time with the rotary cutter, and it still come out crooked as a Dickens. I'd have it, it'd be straight, and then whoop, burn it okay. That's not fun. So that's why when I cut the four panels, which I only need four, there's only two windows in here, I thought I had enough. I really did. Well, I was wrong. I think I can put this light on right here. That might, oh, that helps a lot. There we go. Oh, that lights up the whole thing, doesn't it? Um, so I've been having trouble with my computer. It doesn't want to do a backup, and I don't want another fried PC, which is why I'm paying for a Mac. <laughs> but so I got into doing little things like these. These are candle holders and incense holders, you know, a little flower. And I did, I love my elephants. I have a whole collections. So I did an elephant one and he holds a uh, incense sticks as well. And I had laid all this out last night and I thought, okay, I have two panels that are short and I have two panels that are real really a lot longer, a lot longer. So how do I make the short ones and the long ones the same length? To be like 81 inches finished, finished length. And that means from the top of the curtain that goes, the rod goes through it, right? From the top of there to 81 inches or so. And I thought to myself, well, I ended up with the two short panels. You're not going to believe this. They're with the one inch hem. I only put a one inch hem on the bottom of these things, too. And I'm going to tell you a little trick with uh, keeping your drapes from looking wrinkly. Uh, um, so, 69 inches. I am 13 inches. No, 23 inches too short. Yeah. No, oh, wait. 13 inches. 13 inches was 80, 82. And I said, how the heck am I going to do that? Well, that's when you sit down with a piece of paper. This is where you got to think outside of the box. If you get, you measure your windows and you want 82 inch panels or you want 84 inch panels, you have to measure the 84 and you add to it your hem and your casing for the top where the rod goes through, right? Well, it's a standard that looks nice for the top rod pocket. And for your hem on the bottom is four and four. That's that's the norm. If you buy them in the store, that's what you'll get. You have four inches at the top and four inches hem at the bottom. So if you get, <laughs> if you have a taller window and you buy 84 inch long drapes and they're still a little too short, 
If you can get away with a one inch hem, take that four inch hem out and make you a one inch hem. That's my, that's how I've done that because I've had a 90 inch kind of hanging from where the top of the rod is. And so I would take the hem out and I'd make a little one inch hem. Nobody looks at the bottom of them anyway. They always look at the top, right? Always look at the top. Like these shears in here, I don't like them because they, they only make, they, they made a four inch hem and a four inch pocket and not with the extra seam in there. So it raises them up. <laughs> yeah, they didn't do that. They don't like that. It doesn't have the little ruffle at the top. That's what I like. So I had some material that I thought I had enough to do a different color shears in here. And it's too short. <laughs> and I'm not going to go crazy with that. I do have some regular white sheer fabric for shears. And I'll put, put that in here. It'll be brighter anyway. And uh, um, so I had to look what I have. I got. 269 it ends up being after I take put up the hem. That's how I approach it. I need 80, 81 inch, at least 80 inches. Okay. I've got 69 without putting a hem. I put a one inch hem plus a quarter. Well, a half, but I actually made it one and a quarter. So I gave me an extra quarter inch. Say one and a half is easier to figure out in your head. So I end up with after I do that hem, I have 68 and a half inches. I'm still 14 inches short, basically. I had a one piece of this material that was left after I cut the other ones, which I should have cut longer, and I didn't. Um, but it was only one panel anyway, so it didn't make a difference. And it ends up being, this is a 23 inch piece. Now, if I had just Thought about it. I don't really remember when I got this fabric. It may have been in two pieces already. And it could be what messed me up. But this would have been the answer to my problem. But if I take this, cut it in half, and sew it to those two 60 half inch pieces. Now I've got a seam here. And I've got 20 inches of fabric above it. And that looks really weird. So I don't want to do that. And messes up the look. So I look at the colors. And this is what you do. This is why you keep a stash of fabric, okay, in case something like this happens. So I wish I'd had a piece of blue, but I didn't have any blue other than a blue fabric that was like for pantsuits or, or, or like uh, duck cloth for like men's uh, dockers. Too heavy. This is very light and flowy. And it has in here for the colors, there's like a gold the blue and then green and the green's a true green it's like it's a i call it a grass green you can see the grass the green in there and it has green well this room is going to be our green room my husband doesn't know it yet i'm gonna paint the walls one day a very pale version of this excuse me of this green that's gonna happen so what i did okay actually i got 20 inches of this 23 inches 68 Basically 68, because the half inch is going to be my seam. I'm not using 5 8 seams. I may even go to quarter inch seams on this and just make sure I serge them, which I'm really going to do. <laughs> That's going to be the plan to give it extra strength because a small seam like that is not going to be, even though it's a lightweight material, it's going to be weak unless you give it some strength. So I'm going to use a small stitch seam and I'm going to serge the edge of it. Even though this material doesn't fray or anything, it doesn't really need it. Doesn't need to be searched. Um, I used my pinking shears to cut it because I got tired of it sliding around. Um, so I have my 68 and a half inch, and I have this, and then I have two panels that were really long. One of them was 91 inches, which gave me another 30. No, it wasn't 91. Well, yeah, if it was 91, it gave me an extra like 14 or whatever inches from 69. It gave me another 17 inches. And then the other one that was just a, like three inches shorter. So that only gave me 15 inches. So I'm thinking, so how does this work? <laughs> Actually, it ended up being um, 17. I thought it was 15. I measured it twice. And now it's like 17. So I thought if I add 17 inches, on both of them, and I do real narrow seaming, I'm going to end up with my 81 inches. Amazing, right? But only if I use another color in the middle. 
because I need four of these. I have just enough for four, but not at 17 inches. 12, yes. There's five inches I'm missing. Or actually four. So I'm missing four inches. So I sit down with my brain and a piece of paper and a pen, and this is what you do. You have to, if you're visual, most of us who do sewing are very visual because we want it to look good and we want to make sure the colors match and all that. So I said, I have a piece of green material downstairs. I said two, one army green would not work with this, but this grass green, I had some. And amazingly, it's really, really lightweight material. It's actually kind of, almost kind of flimsy, but so is this stuff. And that's the green. Now these are strips. I cut it into three inch strips. For a reason i don't have a six inch strip cutter number one i could have figured out how to do it but i was in a hurry so i didn't um and so what i did with the what i'm doing with these is i'm going to attach one to the 68 inch piece the other green one attach it to this other green one so i'll have a let's see three and a half three it's going to end up being six inches between five and six inches. And it's going to be a stripe near the top, which isn't going to look bad because I actually held it up and looked at it. And I go, well, and on paper, you know, I did it with, you know, pencil and, and lines and stuff because they're vertical stripes. The main fabric, when you have your main fabric and you don't have enough, if you think you possibly, look, I, I do this now, <laughs> I've never done it in the past. When I get material for drapes, I look for a coordinating color, another material, same type of material that will go with it, whether it be a solid or some kind of a print actually works. So in case I didn't get enough, I didn't do that with this one because this was a, the lady was having a, like a yard sale kind of thing. And she had all this material and I have tons of burgundy sheer fabric. <gasps> yes, I got some, but I don't need it all. I'm going to make them. But I don't need them. Uh, <laughs> But uh, somebody might want one. Um, might be a good gift. What I did, and this is the other thing, width. I knew that my main fabric was wide. It's like 54 inches, I think. It's either 54 or 60. One of the two. I think it's 60, actually. And I got this green, and oh, good, I had green. The green's not 60 inches wide. <laughs> and I said, oh, no. I said, after I cut the strips, I said, okay, great. The strips aren't as wide as my main material. They're still wide. I mean, 45 inches, plenty for one panel because the windows are only 31, 32 inches wide. So that still gives me the fullness that I want. I thought, darn it. What am I going to do when I only have 45 inch wide green and I have 60 inch stripes? <laughs> I said, oh, okay. I can gather the top, do gather stitches, gather it to fit the green, and then put the other green on and then put the blue up at the top, and then it all, we're all good. No, I don't want to take that much time to do that because you have to do two rows, you have close together, and you got to cinch it up and, you know, work them out. I didn't want to do that. Next best thing, pleats. And this is, this is something I've never talked about before. Pleating by hand, not using a pleating machine, or you know, there's a presser fluid where it, it, it pleats for you. No, nah, not for this one. No, no. When you don't have a a standard spacing that, that you need the pleating for, that like you're kind of winging it as you go, you do it by hand, and it's not difficult. It, it's a little. It can be a little tedious if you're impatient, and I'm impatient, but I love doing pleats because it looks so great when you're done. You put the right sides together just like you would normally, okay? But before you pin them together, you take the strip that you're adding to the top. And like I did, I'm going to do this. I, can do this. I got to do this on the next one anyway. So I'm going to take one of these strips. I haven't cut them apart yet. Um, and I'm going to mark it to the matching points you want to match it to the main material. And what I mean by that is you're going to want to match the middle point of your main material 
with the middle point of the strip that you're using to lengthen it with. And you're also going to want to do it in at the quarter mark. So you're doing it at the half and the quarter mark. And then in order to do that, you need to find out where your center spot is on your main piece of material and also on the green part. And I use these, um, this one looks a little bit longer. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I have one piece of this green. It's like really, really long. And that could be good and that could be bad. I've already anticipated them not being long enough. So we'll find out when I go to hook this one up on the next panel. Now this is a prelude. This is just to give you the tools, the ideas, and the tips of when you have, like I say, I totally messed up this time um, on getting the fabric that you need by not getting enough. There are solutions. And some of them are creative and some of them look better than your original idea. Like before, I was just going to have stripes all the way down. And I thought putting this in, up in there towards the top. And it's really going to be just below the um, the window frame. Where it's The window frame is about three inches, three and a half inches. So five inches of green just below that is going to look really cool, honestly. Uh, and now I'm getting excited about doing it. So I'm going to want to get, save myself a step here. But what you want to make sure of is that you have your, you put your right sides together, but to mark your piece, I'll mark this one, even though I'm not, if you have a dark, excuse me, dark fabric like this, you use a, a lighter marking pen. These are marker, that's not it. I had it in my hand. I use a white one on the solid color because that way I can see it. And then the blue, there's also a purple one, then there's a pink one, and I couldn't find the pink or the purple figure um, to mark them. So before you attach your extender, <laughs> this is my extender, you fold it in half, okay? Just like that. And where you fold it in half, you mark it. On the top, just in case you don't know which side you're going to use, on the top and the bottom, you would want to mark it on the right side. That is the right side, isn't it? No, it's not. That's the right side. So you mark it on the right side. So you put a little line. This washes out, by the way. These are the most wonderful things I ever invented. Of it. I mean, tracing paper. Yeah. I used to use it all the time. I hated it. I hated that little tracing wheel. So you're marking the center spot right here is the middle I folded this now then you're going to take that mark and you're going to match it with the edge just like this do the same thing and then mark that it sounds a little redundant doesn't it and then so you've got one mark two marks you're going to halfway quarter way now we're going to do eights so you take that one and match it up to the edge and mark that spot. You're probably thinking, why do I have to make all these dang marks? Because it will save your neck when you're doing this stuff. It also helps you match it to this stripe that I've already put on here. So you do it on all of them. Yes, when you make mistakes, sometimes you got to pay the price. And I got a big, big mistake. So it's my own fault. Okay, and then you do the same thing on the other side. Halfway to the quarter way. You can even draw like a line all the way down the thing if you want. It's going to wash out. It washes out with water. And then again, see there's my eighth mark. Or, excuse me, quarter mark. And then the eighth mark is the next one with the end. Touching that one I just did. I mean, this is stuff, you know, you've done before. This is how we do pleats anyway. If I was making regular pleats, you would take this mark here, bring it to that center mark, and the other one, same way, this way. Where'd it go? Oh, wait, I didn't mark the uh, halfway part there. Yeah, I didn't do that one. Um, <laughs> I forgot to put a mark. I didn't fancy that. And then you would take 
that one, I just touch it in my hand, like that, you're gonna, I think I'm on the wrong side. Okay, so you're gonna make this one meet there, this one meet there, and then on the back, you flip them to the opposite way. We'll do we'll do something with plates one day. But the pleat. That's how you do a pleat. Right there. You just meet them in the middle and then the part in the back, you fan it out. And then you stitch across it and stay stitch it. Or you can just go ahead and go for it. Pin it and go for it. So anyway, let me finish the marks on here really fast. Because I'm not supposed to be running around right now. <laughs> um I'm supposed to be taking a power nap. Because I fuss with my computer. It won't do a backup, I don't know why. And so I haven't slept. So if I'm, I'm hepped up on caffeine a little bit, had some coffee. So you will have to just kind of bear with me here. This will be it. Put that there, that there. That one's there. And that one there. I got one on this side. Okay. I put it on the other? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you're thinking... What do we do with all these marks? <laughs> okay. Well, the same marks you did on this extender piece, you do with your main fabric. Same thing. You're going to mark it just like this. Then you're going to match up your marks. First one you want to do, well, <laughs> you want to do the side hem first <laughs> before you do the marks. I forgot that part. But it's okay if you don't. It doesn't mess anything up. It actually makes your pleats a little, a little more pronounced, and that's okay. So I, I, I eyeball a lot of stuff. So that's my thing. So I'm gonna pretend like this is my main material, okay? But I'm gonna show you how how that one goes. Now the green, because it's the extender, it doesn't have to have any pleating to it. So it's just gonna get pinned. This is the second row. This is the uh, additional extender, and it's going to go all the way across like this. Da -da 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 -da. And it's going to meet at the end. Get off there. And see, this one was a little bit longer. I probably could have done this one on one thing and not pleated, but I want them to be consistent and the same. So I'm going to end up trimming this piece off on the end and making that side seem the same as the one below. Okay, when you have got all your markings and you're, you know, getting ready to hook it to the main material, main material is a lot wider. Hopefully it's a lot wider. If it's not, that's another trick I got to tell you about. And we'll do that one. Uh, sometimes your main material, the one you fell in love with in the store, turns out it's not as wide as your lining. <laughs> yeah, I know how to fix that one too. I've done that. <coughs> you pin your extender piece after you've done the side seam to this end and this end because the green, on in this case, the extender color is not as wide. Okay. Now, to make a wide piece fit it, like I said, you can gather it. You can gather stitches in it. And then go to all that trouble, put them in, and squish them up and spread them out, sew it, and then pull all the stitches out. Or you can pleat it. I decided to pleat it because what the pleating on this is going to do, even though it's going to be flat this way, of course, because it's 45 inches, it's still going to be scrunched. It's going to give it more fullness. It's actually going to make it look better, believe it or not. Now, if you want to see me actually go through this process step by step, that's a follow-up video. But you have to tell me you want to see it. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not going to air it. <laughs> no, that's a lie. <laughs> no. If you comment that you would, you want to see it, I will make sure that you are you are notified by myself personally that on such and such a date, such and such a time, you're going to get to see how to do this step by step in a slower manner. Okay, that's important. You pin the ends first, then you pin the center piece or center spot, I should say. Then you're going to pin wherever you have a little white mark, you're going to put a pin and match it up. You're going to have this extra material in between, but that's what you want. 
So what you do with that is, did I start? To, yeah, I did this one. I did two of them already. But what you do is you take it from the center one that you pinned, okay? And then you have this extra material on this side. I'm going to undo these so you can see what I did. Where's the middle one? <laughs> got to remember which one's the middle one. It would be... Let's go like this so we can figure it out. The middle one is, that's what I thought, that one. Okay. So this is my middle pin right here, okay? And Leslie, I don't have this pin already. So I'm going to take these out so you can get a really good idea of what you're going to end up coming across. Take these pins out. So the middle pin is actually going to sit kind of like this. Okay. I've just pinned it, and that's the middle pin, and you see all this blousey stuff here? All this kind of thing going on? Okay. Okay, so i got to fix that and make, by making a pleat. So because I have pins in those eighth spots, the eighth of the hole on either side of that, then I have something to work with. So what you're going to do is you're going to smooth it in towards the center. Now remember, when you're looking at this, it gets upside down, but... Your pleats are going to go, half of them are going to go this direction, and the other half are going to go this direction. So you want some going to the left and some going to the right. So the ones on the right, make them go to the left, the left go to the right. That way it lays and hangs evenly. I know that sounds weird, but it, it's how it works. So what I did was I find my center point where that pin is. This one, yeah. I keep forgetting which one it is because I already kind of, sort of, kind of wiped it off of there. This one. This goes. Uh, this is what happens when you don't sleep. Okay. That right there is the center. Okay. So the center one, I took the center pin out. Okay. Now I'm looking at my design. Since I have vertical stripes, I want the stripes to not be very much disturbed. So I could do a couple of things. I can make a bunch of little pleats or I can make just a few normal size pleats. This is how you do them. You take the center pin out, the next pins you leave in, you leave them in there, okay? And then you pull it up to where your mark is. Where did that mark go? The, the center mark because where your pin is in the center you're also going to mark it with the pin right so you're going to pull this up in the center and have that line be right here at the top okay the line is here he's like well now how do you make the pleat well you make the pleat you want to make sure that you've got even kind of spacing of the design with my stripes. I don't want a little skinny green stripe thing at the top. I want it to be kind of like almost the same as the other ones. So that's why I'm making them evenly uh, tucked under. So I've got that up there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this green stripe and I'm gonna turn it under about a quarter inch on both sides. This actually looks better than the way I had pinned before. You guys are a good luck charm. Yeah, and that's the way it should be done anyway. So when you're doing a plate, you're actually doing it from behind. You're not doing it from the front, you're doing it from behind. So I'm going to take and show you. You always want your where your mark is that it stays in the center where it was. Okay? And you keep that in the center, and then you squish it out. I call it squishing it out. I don't know what anybody calls it. But I'm actually fixing my pleats in front of you. This is very neat. <laughs> it's not a pin. I have all kinds of pins on the thing. Okay, so what I've done is 
I pulled it over. And that one slid out from under me. I'm stinker. And then I'm like this. So basically what I did was I this part that was bulbing out, I smoothed it over. And I did that on the same side. And my center line is right here in the middle. Because you want that to be in the middle. Always. And the excess, I tucked it under. And it ends up being about a quarter inch tucked under on both sides. So it was a half inch too much fabric there. And if, if I add up the half inches all the way across here. And subtract it from 60 or 54, whatever the width of this material is. It will equal the length of my green stripe or green strip extension strip so that's that one now that's the center one then you go to the next section where you have fabric fluffing out so this is actually turning up better than i had before and so i need to look for my little white mark where are you da -da 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 -da. i think i put it on the wrong side of this thing <laughs> i think so I don't need to see it actually. All right, I'm gonna put it there now. I might have rubbed it off with my hands by accident. Uh huh. I might have. So that was the center there, because that's why you don't disturb the green one, because it's the shorter one. So it is your your, your marking point. And it got mark. It got wiped off of here. That's what happened. And so now I have this one to the center that has to be adjusted. Now, if it's a wider spot, you may have to do two pleats just so that it balances out. You don't want like one huge, huge old piece of a, of a, of a plate. So if that's the case, um, like in this one, here's the next section. I'm going to pull this up to the one that was halfway between here is what's here. And as much I see the mark there. So that's that one. Okay. So I'm going to leave that one pinned. But it still has. I'm going to shoot that pin for coming out of it. <laughs> so this is the next white mark. So I still have some, you know, some loose stuff. So I'm going to do the same thing with that. I'm going to bring the material over to that mark. Okay. And. Same way on the other side, like this, and so that has to be at the top. And this is easy because it has a stripe where that mark was. <laughs> so that's that's where my mark is. I flatten it out. Okay, that's where my mark is right there. That piece right there. My fingers are in the way, but anyway, that. Closer. That is where that pin was pinned. Now to get a pleat out of this, just like in the center, you have to remember where that pin was and you squish it, squish it, slide it, whatever you want to call it, to that point. And you want to give yourself a nice little pleat. And the way you do that. If you got your fingers on either side of the material, it's sticking up in the air, like I showed you, just like that. Sticks up, and then you're gonna gingerly try to get the same width kind of pleat out of the one in the middle. So let's see what I can do with that. I know that is my centaur. And and what you do is where that line is, just push it down. Just do this. Just push that line down with your thumb so it stays in the middle. And whatever tuck under you get, that's your pleat. Now, this pleat's not going to be as wide for one reason. It's not in the middle section. It's off to the side of the middle section. And that's because the middle one is bringing in a lot more than the ones to the other side. So I'm going to do that one. And then, yeah, I like this. This look is much better. There's not as many pleats. 
I did it really difficult. <laughs> I did the hard one <laughs> in the before I turned the camera. I like that. Here's the here's the other one. I'm gonna go like this, pull it up on my mark. I did that mark to actually I can see that one. And then I'm just gonna take my finger and smoosh it straight down. And actually the side, the place to the side of the center are the exact same size. They are both about half inch across. And uh well, a half inch tuck under on the other side instead of a quarter. I started out where I was doing going from one side to the other with a bunch of little quarter inch plates, and I go, that's nuts. <laughs> Why would I do a thing like that? But you know, hindsight's 2020. And I just messed that one up. Oh my goodness. I just want to get to this one side done so you can see how it ends up your side plates from the center. Are going to be smaller well they should be <laughs> they really should be because you're dealing with smaller sections you're dealing with quarter sections and not a whole half that's the difference these are ending up to be these pen to be in pain um about a one inch to one and quarter inch wide um pleat and like i said if you all would like to see how to put this whole thing together, I am going to be doing the follow-up where it is going to be going to be a lot longer than this video, but um, you'll be uh, have a chance to actually see the process and how it all plays out step by step. Without going, what did she just say? What did she just do? <laughs> I'm going to squish that one out. It's so easy when it's light fabric like this. Because all you got to do is just push it down. And it, it behaves. It just kind of goes down there. It goes down there like that. Now, if you accidentally let go of one side, you already know you're going to tuck it in there a quarter inch or a half inch. Just because of the side you just did. <laughs> so, it's, it's not going to uh, mess it up. In any manner. And it goes like this. And then the other pin. And then you'll see. So I have evenly spaced across to the center. One, two, three. Let's see. One, two, three. Three plates before the center. And then there's the center. So now what you want to do when you do get them pinned, and you do want to press them so they'll behave when you go to either stay stitch or final stitch them. So as you can see, this is the back side. I've got one here. There's one, two, three, and then the one in the middle. So if it's divided into four, you're gonna have four, and you count the middle one as the fourth one, and on the other side, same thing. But on the front, yeah. Now this is with the with it down, the green part down, but you have to kind of imagine. Now this green part's gonna come up, <laughs> like this. And those pleats are going to give it this really neat kind of poofy fullness. I don't know if you can see the pleating. Of course, it's not stitched. It looks better when it's stitched, but just like that. Isn't that cool? I mean, it doesn't take away from the stripes. It's only right at the top, and you're only doing like literally a quarter to a half inch seam. So it's not like making the traditional pleats where... You stitch them, and then you stitch on the sides of the pleats. And you stitch them like three inches, and then it, then it goes fans out. This is so much easier. With lightweight, flowy fabric, and you can't beat it doing that way. <coughs> Excuse me. I lost my... Is, instead of gathering it, I didn't want to spend a lot of time at the sewing machine. And this way, I can pin it, and I can press it with the pins in it, because with the glass head pins, you can or all metal. And that way, when you go to stitch it, even if it does come out, it's nice and crisp and you can put it right in place and it'll stay. Um, this is a snippet of a really, could have been a tragic thing, but these are gonna look so cool because I'm looking at green and then green 
I just have, I have to get a feel for this really quick. If you don't mind me with that. And then then the second row of green comes in into play and da, 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 da. Oops, I'm trying to turn around so I can get so you guys can kind of like see what I'm looking at the look I'm going for with the scrap one piece and do like this. Da, da. There's that. We have a wide band of green. Okay. Like this. And then what's that blue base? There, there's there's one. Okay. And this, those. Now, the only tricky thing with this is I'm gonna have to match up those blue stripes. Because <laughs> I'll, I'll go nuts if I don't have them matched up just right. But it works really well. Look at this. Look at this. I'll hold it down close. It's gonna be wire, but look at this stuff. Look at that. Isn't that gonna be gray? See, it didn't work, doesn't it? Green stripe with the blue stripes going this way. Hey, it looks better than the original idea. It's a little. A little more work, but it's all worth it. It's from the dining room. It's for Thanksgiving. Turning this room into the blue room. No, I'm sorry. That's the blue room. This is the green room. Um, hey, did you enjoy any of that? Would you like to see the outcome? Would you like to see it slower, a little slower, step by step? Hey, leave me a comment. We'll get these things done together. And if you've got some material at home and it's too short, but you want to make curtains out of it, Go look for something that matches it or a complementary color, something that you can put a little stripe of it in there, lengthen up. If now more times than not, what I have had to do, the main material, it was almost long enough. It was a lot longer, 69, so like 70 inches. And I needed 82, right? Put a band of color at the bottom, band of color at the top, make the ties the same way. Oh, gorgeous. Home decor is the funnest thing ever. All you gotta do is Think outside the box. <laughs> just, hey, find your joy. Find your passion. Hey, always, just keep sewing. Like my videos. Share them all day long. And oh, by all means, please do subscribe. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you want to see these things in the process. Otherwise, I'm just going to do a video that says, here's what they look like when they're done. <laughs> I would love to see what you guys do too. Hey, share with me. I like to see your work too. Everybody, have a great week. I'll probably be back on here before the end of the week anyway. Uh, hopefully. Uh, getting ready for Thanksgiving is a, is a trip, in it? <laughs> Let alone the, the C word <laughs> coming in December. <laughs> Not ready for that one. When you have the app that tells you how many days until Christmas. She told me, oh yeah, 67 days now. That was like four days ago. So it's probably like 62 days now. God bless. Hey. If you ever need any ideas on how to fix a problem, and, you, and as far as you don't know where, where to go with it, I didn't know where to go with this until I thought about the colors and the cartons and what I had in my stash. There's an old remark that I keep hearing. Is there, can a person have too much fabric? Heck no! You can't, you can't have too much fabric. This extra piece of fabric that I really wasn't going to use for anything saved my butt. Okay, save my curtains, and they're going to look fabulous in here. And I might even have enough of the stripes to do tie backs. I can't wait. I forgot. I can actually piece of green. Oh, make green tie backs. But if I do that, since it's so lightweight, I'm going to use fuse one phrasing. But hey, those are little tips and tricks that you don't know yet because you haven't seen the video on those. Uh, they might come. Just ask. <laughs> Guys, take care. This has been a blast. I love sewing. I hope you do too. Hit me up for any ideas and I'd be glad to oblige. Take care. Uh -huh.